All right, so in 7.1, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Um, you can see it here. Uh, oftentimes, we write it the other way around and write it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and hopefully you remember that this is used in right triangles, specifically when we work right triangles. Um, in, in the a squared, b squared, c squared, we call the a and the b legs, and then the c is the hypotenuse. Um, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the right triangle. It's the side that's opposite of the 90 degree angle. Um, and so C is the hypotenuse that has to be the C in the um, in the A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so uh, now we take a look down here at this triangle. Uh, the two legs, we've got a six here, we've got an eight there. Those are both legs. So the two sides that together touch the right angle. And then if you go across the way, here's your hypotenuse, which is X. So the two legs are your A and your B, and they're interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one's which, but this X has to be your hypotenuse. So if I'm going to use my A squared plus B squared equals C squared, let's plug them in. So one of them is 6 uh, and square it. The other one's 8. We're going to square it. And then X is your hypotenuse squared. So we've got thir oops, sorry, 36 plus 4 is equal to X squared. Uh, that's a total of 100 equals X squared. So I would have to square root it. Um, typically, when we square it, we have to do a plus minus, but we're talking about a length and it can never be negative. So I'm going to ignore the fact that there's normally a plus minus here. Normally I would do this, but I get to erase those since we're in geometry. Uh, and so the square root of 100 is 10. So now I know the answer. The answer to, to that is 10. So that's the length of the hypotenuse. So now if we look at this next problem, you've got a ladder, a 16 foot ladder, rests against the side of the house. Base of the ladder right here is four feet away from the house. Um, we know the ladder itself was 16. We assume, yep, that the house is uh, is perpendicular to the ground, and we're trying to find the height of the house. So this time we know the hypotenuse. We know one of the legs is four. We're trying to find the other leg. So the legs are the A and the B. So one of them, I don't know, we call that X squared. The other one's four, and then your hypotenuse is 16. So let's do a little simplifying here. And we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. So now we've got to square root the 240. Um, and like we talked about in class, um, I want I see, normally I want exact answers, but if I look at the multiple expressions, they're all in decimals. So it's okay in this case to use the calculator. So type in your calculator. You'll want to grab one, type in square root of 240, and we see that it's about 15.4919, etc. So about 15.5. So D is our answer. The next example, um, we're trying to find the area of this triangle. To find the area of the triangle, we want to remember. Area equals one half times the base times the height. So the base of the triangle is 10. We need to know what the height of the triangle is, and I don't know what the height of the triangle is, but the height, it's an altitude, it has to be perpendicular to the base. And as long as this is an isosceles triangle, it, it, it um, it's going to be perpendicular. It's going to cut the base in half. So that's why we have five and five. So I'm going to focus just on one of these right triangles. Since it's a right triangle, I can do Pythagorean theorem. 5 is one of my legs. I kind of covered up H there, but that was my other leg. And then 13 is my hypotenuse. So I'll do Pythagorean theorem with those. So height squared plus 5 squared is equal to your 13 squared. Subtract your 25. Square root of 144 is 12. So the height equals 12. So now I can take that over here. Think about now my, my area. I'm going to do 1 half times 10 times 12. Uh, and when you actually multiply that out, you can change the order. I would do 10 times 12 is 120, and half of 120 is 60. We're dealing with meters, 
and area is always squared, the unit is squared. So 60 square meters is the area. And the last part of this is what's called Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples are three numbers that together make a right triangle where they're all integers. So three, four, and five. Um, if you wanted to test it, the two short ones are three and four. They're the A and the B of Pythagorean theorem. And the long one is the hypotenuse. Let's just test this, make sure it works. Three squared is nine plus four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25 equals 25. So you've noticed that the Pythagorean theorem does, in fact, work with 3, 4, and 5. They're all integers. We like making triangles of sides 3, 4, and 5. But there's some other uh, Pythagorean triples, 5, 12, 13. So if you have two legs of 5 and 12 and a half minus 13, it's 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. Those are nice to know because Sometimes, as a teacher, I'm going to use those in my problems so that I know you get nice integer answers. And because that's true, it's helpful to you if you recognize them. Certainly, it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, but you'll also, also make sure you see it says and of that multiples. So what we can do is do multiples of each thing. So 3, 4, and 5, if I could like double each of those, and if 6, 8, and 10, 6, 8, and 10 make a right triangle, and they're all integers as well. I could triple them. Like 12, 9. Or sorry, 12, rather. Um, okay, sorry, 9, 12, and 15. I could multiply them by 4, 5, 6, whatever, any of those multiples. Same thing with the immediate. Oh, 10, 24, 26. That's another example. Uh, jump over here, I could have 14, and 28, and 50. You know, anytime we have those sets, we know that they make a right triangle and they're all integers. So those are worth being familiar with. And you'll um, notice as you do the assignment that you'll find that. So um, you'll have a Canvas quiz. This is section 7.1. So you'll want to do the 7.1 uh, Canvas quiz uh, as your assignment.